All right, baby. Give me edibles. Uh, Mike Cannon's on the show. I'm wearing a Shania Twain T-shirt because I know that's what he would want me to do. So I'm talking about him like he's dead. He's right here. <laughs> and how, dude, much, how much do you want? So well, how much is that? This is 100. What? Yeah. How much did you give me last time when we did it? That's oh, my God. oh, my goodness. I'll eat that one. Okay. I'll, I'll, so I give you time to decide. Okay. So here we go. It's 100 milligrams. Oh. What do you want? How much? You can't take 100. I mean. I can't take 100. Or you're just. Here. 25. 25. Give me 25. I've normally ever. I'll give you half. Okay. And then you decide what you do. Okay, cool. So here we got. We're on it. I'm going to put my little strip. Oh, look. It looks like bacon. And I ate the other <laughs> half. <laughs> It does. It looks like a dog treat that's supposed to be look <laughs> supposed to look like bacon. We're on edibles, baby. The Chris and Eddie show, as we used to do, but we ain't on the Patreon, folks. We're on YouTube with Mikey Cannon. I just said, you know what? I want to do fucking edibles. Hang out. We're here. I know whenever this episode comes out, it'll be a Monday. We're here on a Saturday. I said, I gotta. I've been here all day. I was like, I'm throwing on my Shania Twain T-shirt and I'm talking to Mike Cannon on edibles. <laughs> Because that's what it is. Now, when will this hit me? Is this stronger? Is this some of your strong stuff? I, I don't know what it is, and it might have something to do with the fact that I'm actually active lately, but these have been, like, coursing through my body almost immediately. Really? Like, you just feel like the march is on. <laughs> like, ten minutes in, you'll, you'll start to feel a little warm. Where did you get them? Uh, these are, like, a smoke shop in the city. These are all over the place. These are the the whole bag is a thousand milligrams. That's Did ten you say of live those. resin. Isn't that what killed somebody in uh, uh, Breaking Bad? Live resin. No, that's ricin. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was Jesse. <laughs> you just give it to the little kid. Yeah, <laughs> just to divert attention. No, this is live <laughs> resin, which is uh, that's really potent. What's indica? This is a a chill vibe. The chill one. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah. So sativa sometimes. Uh, it, for me personally, and I think you run similarly to me, is I require a, an indica because I run hot regular. Right. So, like, my anxiety is pumping. I'm All fast day. paced. Yeah. I burn through even the slow moving indica shit that's supposed yeah. to, like, calm you down. Yeah. And I'm just kind of at zero. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like every time I do edibles with you, I was like, I've been like looking forward to this because, like, I've also, I'm not drinking as much. Um, jawline looks good, dude. Huh? Jawline looks it, baby. good. It's back. Yeah. And I will say, what size shirt is that? This is a large. It Like, because like, you wouldn't have been able to wear that shirt no. even a year ago. Dude, I swear to God. I was. I think I was telling, was I telling Vito? Oh, no, I was telling Brian more in this, Lancelot, who runs my social media. I was telling <laughs> ben him. Ben Franklin hair? Yeah, yeah, Ben Franklin. Yeah, nickel head. <laughs> There's nickel back. He's nickel front. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, and, then, and, and, and we... And so I was telling him, dude, this has not happened to me. I swear to God, like in recent memory, like maybe since I was like in my 20s, mm. I, I went to the, I was going uh, to the gym in Brooklyn. Shout out Badass Academy. I mean, look at what pieces of absolute gold. That look, looks like Joe Santagato in the background. Dude, um, it's actually stunning how I squandered my youth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like just I, I've aged into being moderately OK looking, but I really in my 20s just tossed away any opportunity at a jawline. By the way, everybody in this photo, these are my other two friends off camera. They're civilians, so I won't say their names in case like they're not allowed to listen to this podcast because of their job. <laughs> they both have lost like a 100 pounds each. They both are no shit like easily 100 pounds each. They they look radically different. That was, by the way, that was my apartment in Long Island City. Yeah. Um, where I lived for about six months before I met Jasmine. I was finally single and free. That couch was um, like a couch that we all like. I would sleep on. I had sex on that couch. Yeah. And that when we moved, when we moved from Long Island City, when Jasmine got pregnant with our first child, and we had to move from Long Island City to Park Slope, the last thing was that couch, mm -hmm. and Jasmine wouldn't let me put it in the moving van. <laughs> She was like, nope, you're going to have to leave that here. Yeah. And I was like, we have a couch. I, sa I said, we need a couch. She goes, I ordered one on your credit card. It's already at the new apartment. <laughs> you're not bringing that. She goes, you're not bringing that slut cum filled couch around our children. That's actually good. I, yeah. I think, isn't that, I was just thinking about like, because look at us. You've gotten better looking. Yeah. I've gotten better looking. Seriously. This is, this is the unfairness of gender. Yes. Is that men start out 
ugly or goofy. Yeah. And so we we establish and, right. and, and develop a, a personality and right. we learn how to be funny yeah. and we learn how to be witty and whatever right. and, and just to carry a conversation. Women start out attractive. Yeah. So they don't develop any of that. No. Nope. And then they deteriorate over yeah. time. And then they're left clawing, trying yeah. to climb back over the hill. And that that's the only <laughs> way. That's the only way I can ever even know what gender you truly are is you have to show me a picture of what you used to look like. Yeah. And if you got uglier, you're a woman. <laughs> and if you got better looking, you're a man. <laughs> That's what it is. That and then I can confirm biologically yeah. what sex you are. Yeah. Dude, you literally because I mean, it's true. We both look we both look like we're in our early to mid 40s there. And you have yeah. salt and pepper hair now and you look like you're in your late 20s. Right. You look yeah. younger with grayer hair. Yeah. I look I I look I look like I'm going through a tough time <laughs> right yeah. there. Well, which I'll, I definitely yeah, was. Yeah, I was going to say I'll pull up the text messages <laughs> yeah. you definitely were. Nicole earmuffs. Um, <laughs> you were this close. <laughs> That's also when I was in my uh, my period where I, I I wouldn't exercise or stop drinking, right. but I would shave just below my jawline to just kind of yeah. you know give the illusion that there was some sort of shape. It was you, like contour makeup for my face. I remember that day too. I remember like I remember feeling like free that day. I remember like oh I think it was for the New York Times. We did like an article it was a. Sunday. Yes. I remember it was a we Sunday. got brunch. We had brunch. We had they filmed everything. I was like, well, what a lot. I, I, and I remember thinking, like in that time, like I'm. This is. I, I. I. I feel great. I look great. I was so happy. Amazing. And then I can tell you, <laughs> I, that's what my feelings were. And then looking at myself in that picture, I was fat, swollen, and I had chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that. So I, the lot. The, the my point is, is like you can convince yourself. Of anything, like yeah. e even people who you know want to convince themselves that they're doing well when they're not. It's like reality is whatever you want it to be. It doesn't. My reality doesn't. If I see you as yeah. like fat, overweight, and depressed, that's my reality. <laughs> if you don't see yourself that way, then you're not that way. Yeah, that, it's just the truth, right? Yeah, but I'm this pretty hitting me quick. But I'm, but I'm pretty. Yeah, I told Holy you, dude. Shit. I told you. It hit me quick. I don't know what it is about this particular brand, and it, people are of course going to call bullshit. But it, there's yeah. something about it. It starts behind the eyes. Yeah. Dude, right? I was just going to say, I start to feel a little bit of vibration and a zapping behind the eyes. And then I said, let's get philosophical so people turn off the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't. Re where was it? What was this for? That was for the New York. New I was in an article in the New York Times. Um, it was called Swinging for the Fences. I believe it was something with MLB and oh, MTV. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's Off right. Yeah, if you scroll down a little bit, V, scroll down. They decided to go a little bit more. They decide, uh, keep going to the next picture of me in the batting cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they decided to post a picture of me <laughs> swinging and <laughs> missing out a ball. Buddy, eight <laughs> solid inches, dude. <laughs> and look at my stupid face. <laughs> and then if you scroll up, my friend is not even looking. He's looking away because he's like, this is fucking embarrassing. And this is what the New York Times went with. I mean, it looks like you're taking a healthy cut too. I, yeah, I and then I that that softball game I went 0 for 3. Oof. And it is interesting in life because again, I thought I felt that way. I thought I was like happy and then I didn't realize that like it was not going to be for some time until like you know, like about 8 months, oh no, a year later, you know, Delilah was born, my whole life changed and then like real happiness started to come, but like back then in that moment, that person like I thought I was just happy and great on top I of the world. Was, I thought it was ripped, and it's like <laughs> none of it is true. But what I'm, I'm saying that to say, so so is interesting. Two or three days ago, and I don't know like why this happened or how this happened. It hasn't happened since. But I was going to the gym early in the morning. Shout out Badass Academy in Bay Ridge, and I um I was walking to the. I parked my car and I was walking the block to the gym, and like an older woman, like you know in her fifties, like you know pretty mm. pretty woman. I was walking and she goes, you are so handsome, sir. I just want to tell you that. She's like, you really are a handsome man. Wow. And I was like, holy shit. And I, I, I hadn't gotten, I, I had gotten my haircut a few hours later. No, no, oh, I hadn't wow. gotten my haircut yet. So I had, and I, I didn't feel good about myself. And I was like, whoa, that's okay. Well, yeah. weird, right? Weird. Then I get a haircut after I went to the gym. I'm walking to meet Brian Moore and Lancelot, Nickel Front. And I... <laughs> And I was walking, and a girl, a younger girl, she was drunk, but yeah. still coming out, of, coming out of the bar, she was drunk, but she goes, you are fucking hot. You're fucking hot. <laughs> and I was like, 
what? <laughs> and then I was, and it was kind of like, I was so taken back because I haven't heard nobody, no woman has said that to me in public yeah. in, in years, maybe even <laughs> ever. And then it happened twice in the same day. So I was like, this will be a good thing to bring up to Jasmine. <laughs> and, and I said, Jazz, what is it about me uh -huh. that's changed recently? And she just looked at me and turned her back and went to sleep. <laughs> and she did not answer. She had no interest in, in affirming your... Yeah. yeah. Well, because I was supposed to get this mole removed because I was like, oh, it's kind of, it just protrudes out of my face. Mm -hmm. And then when I told her that, like 20 minutes went by, she's like, you shouldn't get that mole removed. <laughs> and then you should keep it. And I was like, she was like, it looks better on you. It's like a, a, a prom. It's like a part of your yeah. facial feature. And now I'm realizing that she just wants a hairy mole on my face. Well, because they want to. They want like something that isn't like that they can get past, but that the world can't get past to want to have sex with you. Yeah, Do you, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I walk, I, I, I'm in shape moderately for the first time, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, I'm truly like walking by mirrors, just like, yeah, like all that? the time, nonstop, yeah. just because just being a vain asshole. And I, I constantly to Nicole, I'm like, I'm like, I look, I look good, no, right. <laughs> like, right. I look yeah. good, like, come on, yeah. Yeah. compliment me, talk me up, and she refuses to give it up because there's like a little bit I could tell yeah. where she's like, I don't want you out in the world with that much like cocksureness. But you know what it is with me? Like, when both those women said that to me, it, it feels good because you're like, don't expect it. And we're human beings. It's like, you always want to hear nice things about you. But like, a, a, a younger me would have tried to stop and talk to them, been like, sure. let's hang, this is like in, like I could have sex. Where my immediate thought was when they both said those things to me is, what a nice compliment, took it in for me, mm -hmm. and then kept moving because I was like, I don't have an ounce of energy to give you, lady. <laughs> I, I couldn't even, yes. if I tried, yeah. I couldn't even muster up to even, even if I was single, to even ask for your phone number or yeah. what I, I gotta go. Well, and do you want to know a sociopathic way of looking yeah. at it that might satisfy you as well? Yeah. Is you left both of of those situations as on top yes. as possible. Yes. So say you did. Say you're even single, right. and you stopped. You guys had yeah. a day. You had sex. Right. Do you think their opinion of you would be as high in as in that moment? Not at the end of the day after spending actual time when with I'm, you. When I'm yeah, when I'm having sex with them and I try to put my finger in their mouth and it's a half chewed off <laughs> nail that smells like Doritos. <laughs> no, I think I'm gonna get knocked like, down easy a peg. Aziz, yeah, get me I, the yeah, red wine. I'm rubbing my hands. I'm, <laughs> I'm caressing their back. I have all calluses on my hands. It feels like it's just sheetrock rubbing a razor blade for hands. This fucking hit me, dude. Can I take another? Just wait a razor second. Razor blade right? hands? Yeah, wait. Give, okay. it, give it a couple minutes. Dude, I, and then we're going to go eat after this. Yeah, that's going to be the best part. Did you eat bad today? Were you like, what no, did you no. Do? No, I've been okay. I went, uh, what did I eat What'd for breakfast? Have today? I uh, oh I barely ate to be honest because I I took crew for breakfast this morning my son is he, today his birthday two days two He's days be four yeah years and I'm old. sorry I can't go to the party we got it's the okay. fucking it's we're gonna doing be a banger dude we're doing a hundred people I know amazing dude last I, we went last year that it was so hot it was like people almost dropped dead in the pool yeah I mean my father is definitely gonna be overheating eating lasagna in a hundred wait what time degrees. does the party go till it starts at one but what time does it end forever. It's just going to keep going. Yeah, we're going to oh, keep so it going. Also, hypothetically, if because we got a podcast in here at twelve, yeah. If we left here, if I left this studio at by one thirty, what time could I get to do, to the house? You would get there latest by two thirty. So I can probably come then. Yeah. All right. So then we're just going to go. All right. Great. I didn't. I thought that I was not. I thought it was like one to three. No, not to mention you'll be able to like at that by the time you get there, my father in law will have had like eight beers and he has no two front teeth, but he'll be wearing American flag swimsuits. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point, he's gonna be telling you which flags he really wished were on his flag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good. Yeah. yeah. Right, he had right, to so take down a couple of the more aggressive yeah. ones just for this event. So we're gonna come and then here's how my <laughs> brain works. As uh, immediately I'm committing to coming, which I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. And now, now I'm like, but I don't have a gift. So what? I'm immediately thinking, which one of my daughter's toys can I re-gift to Crow? <laughs> <laughs> we want the Barbie photo booth yeah, <laughs> from I'll the birthday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You Strap think if it I gave Crew a, like a full doll, he wouldn't think he would just play. He wouldn't bat an eye. He would probably play with it in the sense that he would make one of his dinosaurs eat it. Yeah. Or is, like you hit it with a truck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah, classic cannons and their women. Yeah, dude. It's fucking. <laughs> So we're gonna go to the park. Yeah, dude, this thing fucking hit me. It's 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 hitting me now. It's the thing is, I don't know what it is. And I, and when I do edibles, it's not always 
100% a good experience, but every time I do them with you, it's yeah. fun. You're like a shaman. <laughs> you are well, in a way. Because I feel confident that like you'll know what to do if it starts going bad. Yeah, I, I definitely will. I've also, I, I did I tell that story about how I took care of my brother-in-law on mushrooms? No. Dude, so it, I was at the Foo Fighters concert a couple years ago, right? Okay. I was with my sister, her husband, and and Nicole, and our friend Virginia was also randomly there. We didn't see her the entire time. She, but she like, was there. She was somehow there. Right. Uh, I was the only one that took mushrooms yeah. because, you know, I rage at concerts. Yeah. Everybody else was like gonna have a beer but they were kind of like you know just hanging out enjoying the concert my brother-in-law at this point was going to cornell working doing all this shit he at the I, 80 minutes into the concert taylor is being like you know lifted 40 feet above the stage and he's playing drums it's like a light show i am booming out of my mind there goes my hero i'm like right. crying thinking right. about how much i love varsity blues right <laughs> and, and out of nowhere i turn around i hear and a scream and I turn around and my brother-in-law collapsed and he fucking cracked his head on the concrete oh. fucking floor of Madison Square Garden. I'm fully hallucinating. My older sister is screaming, James, James. And I, he's, I like, he's, he's, he's dead he's on out. the floor. He's out. And I, I'm just like, oh shit, lights. I pick him up. I'm get. I'm like, James, James, like trying to shake him up. The fucking lights are blue. So he looks dead. I'm hallucinating and he's blue and unconscious and I'm holding him and I'm screaming his name and he and I'm like, he's fucking dead, dead dude. dude. This guy I, just my, died. My sister is screaming. Nicole is like trying to find a flag down a, a, a EMT ambulance. Or EMT, yeah. yeah. And uh, out of nowhere, <laughs> my brother in law just goes <laughs> and like pops up, hugs my sister. I like lift him up. On mushrooms, hallucinating, <laughs> grab him out of the standing room general uh, general admission, lift him to one of the EMTs. They like get him, bring him out to the infirmary. I'm now in the like lobby with Nicole. I'm hearing Foo Fighters in the background. Everything is just running. All these like different weird posters, the Knicks, you know, all all this shit art all over the place. I'm hallucinating. Nicole picks a fight with me because she's hungry, yeah. so I'm like losing my mind. And I'm like, I'm on fucking mushrooms. I'm the only one on mushrooms. And yeah. she's like, you're saying that as if somebody did it to you. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you chose this life, man. Yeah, like, yeah, deal with it, yeah. stupid. So I like run into one of my buddies, which only happens on mushrooms, is I ran into T one of my friend Tim's ex- like shark eyed evil girlfriends that right. was around for like three of his darkest months of life. Right. And she like came slithering out of the bathroom yeah, at yeah. one point and was like <laughs> yeah, yeah. on fucking Coke and I'm all mushroomed out. And Nicole yeah. like Heisman her out of the way at some point. And finally an EMT guy grabbed us, brought us to the infirmary in the belly of fucking Madison square garden. I'm in there there as, as soon as we walk in, Two guys are being told by the doctor, he's like, I cannot make you, but it is my medical advice that you need to go to the to the emergency room right now. You are currently experiencing a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm kind of cool. I'm good. Like, he's like, <laughs> like yacked out of his face, like pulling his ears. And the doctor's like, okay, I cannot make you, but you're in cardiac or like, like <laughs> you're in <a> cardiac arrest. <laughs> and I'm just here like, beep. Beep, beep. Yeah. My brother-in-law is like an ice pack on his head. Uh, I, I turn fucking Jr. the manager of the comic strip. Oh yeah, turns around in full EMT costume. Just He's one of a, man a manager from a comedy club. That's my only knowledge of him and my only relationship to him. While I'm on mushrooms, getting my brother-in-law out of the hospital of Madison Square Garden, all of a sudden turns around in an EMT outfit. And he's like, oh, what's up, dude? How you doing? He's like, yeah, your brother-in-law doesn't look good, man. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't look like he's like doing bits at me. And I'm like, what the fuck? You Get probably thought at that moment, this is, it's not him. It just looks like him. No, I, I didn't know what to think. I was like looking at him just like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, yeah, JR. <laughs> How you doing? I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool, man. The doctor comes over, like pushes him out of the way. He's like, don't listen to a yeah, word he's saying. Brother-in-law is like totally fine. We ended up just like it, it, sneaking out the back of MSG, getting in a cab, driving back to Queens, and I was just hallucinating for six more hours. What in my the hell happened apartment. to your brother-in-law? He was fine. He was just exhausted. <laughs> That's it. No, it was <laughs> so right, nothing like, to do with the drugs. He would have collapsed. No, he, anyway. didn't, he didn't take any, so he was sober. 
he had just like been working and going to school like for like 19 hour days for four months straight and had no like anything so he just collapsed and fell yeah well that's what happens too with people is they work so like i remember when i was a physical therapist somebody collapsed <laughs> and i remember the doctor coming in and he's similar he was working so much and then people you don't realize he says to the guy he goes they did his blood or something and i guess they could figure out they were like you're very dehydrated he goes when's the last time you had a drink of water and he goes last week <laughs> he was just drinking sodas and iced teas and beers he Ooh. didn't have a some guy that collapsed in the physical therapy office 10 oh years ago. My he, he said he, didn't have, uh, he hadn't had a glass of water in a week and the, and the doctor's like um, that's probably what caused you to pass out. <laughs> so it's like you don't even realize like your brother-in-law could have maybe not had a sip of water for two days. I know. Definitely didn't have like a good night's sleep for several weeks, if not months. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, who knows? I, dude, I had after that, and I don't know if you've ever watched somebody pass out, or I didn't even watch them, but I heard yeah. it and like that created an image in my head. But I remember being at Magoobies the week later, and every time I would like kind of pace the stage a little bit, I would have a vision of me collapsing right on stage falling and hitting my head on the stage and then yeah. just waking up Wake to up. people to the eight audience members being like sir guys kiwi co i can't talk about it enough i wish they would let me i just want the entire show to be bought out by kiwi co because it's literally what my family and i do all the time kiwi co if you are looking for a way to get your children off devices to get them more engaged to start using their minds using their hands building being creative Kiwi Co. is the place for you. They send these kits to the door and they have all different types of things. My kids built volcanoes with them. My kids built a pinball machine. They have all different science projects, art projects. It's amazing. And right now, Kiwi Co. is going to give you a dope discount. First of all, what they like to do is they encourage kids to get outside and explore, get them off the screens, which I said, which is amazing. Um, they um, have the, they take discovery on the go. Everything you need is in the crate. That's true. It, they make it literally so simple. Like, you know me, I'm an idiot, and even I can figure out KiwiCo. Um, you'll be surprised at how high quality the materials are, too. They, they really are. The real, there's real engineers. Real engineers and scientists built this stuff, folks. Okay? It, it, this is real. And they do all the legwork for you so you can spend most of so you can spend all that time just doing it with the kids like you don't it's not frustrating you know something oh where's the screw where's this no it's not like that with kiwi co they make it really family friendly and my kids love it and there's no commitment you can pause or cancel anytime or you're going to get 50 percent off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with the code chaos at kiwico.com that's k-i-w-i-c-o.com promo code chaos 50% off. I cannot recommend KiwiCo enough. If you have kids, you're a big kid at heart. It is awesome. And it's the best, one of the best products out there. Go use the promo code chaos. Thank you. Dude, pe <laughs> people are fucking ridiculous, bro. I had, I, I know a guy, his face, I saw him, his face was like three times, like it was so swollen where like, it looked like he had been like stung by like a hundred bees. And I was like, dude, what happened to your face? He was like, He's like, dude, don't get your wisdom teeth pulled. Don't get your wisdom <laughs> teeth pulled. And I was like, okay. I was like, what happened? He goes, I got two wisdom teeth pulled, and then I got a massive infection in my face. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, was it from the actual procedure? And he was like, well, yeah. He goes, but then they didn't tell you that you can't really eat sushi with wasabi and spicy foods. They should tell you that because I ate a bunch of sushi the next day, and a bunch of wasabi got in the holes, oh. and it gave me an infection. I'm like... What kind of asshole? <laughs> he got dry to eat. socket from wasabi. Yeah, dude, it dried <laughs> oh him the fuck out. God. I'm like, what do you fucking like? What? And then he works. Mm -hmm. He's like a construction worker yeah. that is probably just breathing in fucking toxic chemicals, <laughs> break dust, biting his stuff. nails. Oh, I'm like, yeah, fuck. dude. You're, it's not the wisdom tooth, dude. Yeah. It's your, it's your self care. Dude, I, I got my wisdom teeth out, and I was taking a, a small bite. I was such a derelict that I. I went to school back to college the next day and we drove all the way to Geneseo and I couldn't do that ride without smoking weed. So I would take a, you're not, you're definitely not supposed to smoke. You get like a hardcore infection and fuck up your whole jaw yeah. that way. And I was smoking blunts and then yeah. taking a swig of water and Gatorade and swishing it around yeah. and then exhale. You got dry socket. I didn't. I oh, actually, I thwarted it. Right. But so, right. that, that type of uh, like, I, did, I probably didn't. I just lucked out. But that type of like, oh, I affirm yeah. that shitty behavior. Yeah, dude, <laughs> Jasmine got her wisdom teeth pulled like three weeks ago and got dry socket. As soon as we got out of the, like, as soon as she got out and came into the car, her face was swollen. 
And she goes, can I get, let's go get iced coffees. So I was like, she, she said the doctor, you know, didn't give her any instructions. She said she'll be fine. So she was drinking iced coffees through a straw, uh, like just slurping iced coffees through a straw. And then she was blowing up balloons for the kids for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and then that night she goes, my tooth feels weird. My mouth feels weird. And then I was like, well, I don't think you're supposed to drink through a straw. She's like, the doctor never said that we couldn't. And then we Googled it and it says the number one thing, <laughs> number one is not to drink through a straw. And she drank through like 10 straws and got dry socket. Dude, dry so she can take pain. I mean, she gave yeah. birth to three humans. She was like, I need, I like, I can't take this pain. I need an epidural. Yeah, give it to me. <laughs> give me your tiny give me a dick. Chin epidural now. Yeah, <laughs> I know, dude. Yeah, teeth are. I went to the dentist. Shout out, uh, shout out, uh, Liana Smiles on Highland Boulevard in Staten Island. Um, she's there's she, a free cleaning, dude. She's a great dentist. She's a fucking <laughs> great dentist. She numbs your mouth for the cleaning, Ooh, which is what I need. I like that. You need to be numb for the cleaning. I have, I do you because I have anxiety with the dentist. And I love and a I, dentist that talks to you about how great the movie The Sound of Freedom was while she's doing your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're burying that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't want you to see it. Yeah, I love it. I really do love it. The last two dentists I've had have tried stand up. Oh my the god! The last two dentists have literally laid their tools on my chest and told me bits while they're yeah, scraping no, out my fucking nerves. I yeah, dude. I love she, <laughs> she. She's great dentist, but it's like I guess dentists just do this. She was, or maybe they don't. She's like filling my cavity, and it's it's so painless. She's like it's amazing. But while she's filling it, she's like, you know, your teeth are a little stained too. That you're a little yellow, your teeth. And she's like, your molars are off. And she's just kind of critiquing and shitting on how dirty my <laughs> mouth looks. I'm like, can you just fill the hole? <laughs> but I guess that it's it's her job. It's a dentist's yeah. job to be like, hey, you got a fucked up mouth, dude. Yeah, it's also their job, though, to, like, really instill insecurity in your teeth oh, yeah. so you'll continue to come back for as many cosmetic things as yeah. possible. Dude, when you get your mouth numb from Novocaine and you try to talk, you feel like an asshole. Yeah. Like, even sipping one, one side of your mouth doesn't work. It's just, like, you feel like you can't even, like, move your nose. One of the hard—you just reminded me of something that I probably haven't thought about since I was four years old. One of the hardest I've ever laughed was from the show A Perfect Strangers. Balky Baltakamus right. uh, had a numb mouth from the dentist and kept trying to sip water. And it kept just <laughs> falling out of his mouth. And at four years old, that made me shit blood. I, mean, I absolutely couldn't get enough. Dude, that's, that's like bits like that are like timeless. That and farts. I feel like a fart, uh, you can just remember. I wish I could actually remember the first time I heard a fart. And like what my brain must have thought it was. Do you have a hard, do you have like a good fart memory? Like some, like when you got somebody real bad. I, not me. I remember vividly me. My dad was walking with me and my cousin. He was taking us to basketball practice. We were maybe six years old. And he, uh, we were walking on Forest Avenue in Ridgewood, Queens, two blocks away from where the parish I was at St. Matthias. And he ripped such a loud fart with no warning like such a loud fart like i mean insane fart and he goes i didn't know there were ducks in ridgewood <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 which is like an old school like yeah. dad joke but i remember what my dad was wearing mm -hmm. i remember what i was wearing i remember looking at my cousin and being kids yes dying laughing yeah. and it was like amazing yeah fart, and he I, probably doesn't remember it at all it was just another fart for him. <laughs> just, just another one. <laughs> just another notch on the fart belt. Yeah. I remember I, when I was a sophomore in high school, I, my aunt uh, Mickey was driving me home from a summer league basketball game. And, you know, this is like protein shits days. You're 15 oh, years old. You are just nutrients. like, yeah, just everything is just coming out. Explode. My body odor and balls oh. were like at a fever pitch. Just, yeah, you're just wise. covered in your own cum it's all the time. Nuts. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. If you actually at that age, I bet if you dipped your finger into any like 15 yeah. year old boys, sweaty belly, like if you yeah. got <laughs> sounds fucked up. If you got your own belly button sweaty at 15 and popped your finger in and yeah. then smelled it, you'd throw up. You throw, dude, I yeah. literally like damn, I'm talking about every day of my 15th, 16th, and probably 17th year of life, there was residual cum in my belly button. I would just jerk off and yeah. leave it in there. The worst is when you'd like, it would dry and then you'd shake it out like glitter in an envelope. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I can't tell you how many times I'd put my shirt on and the, it would just get stuck to my belly because it was just crusted over. Yeah. Uh, have you ever, uh, it took me a long time to learn this the hard way, but like, 
where you, you know, you're in a rush when you're 14 because you have a lot to do. So you're just, you just pop one off and then pull your underwear on immediately. And then 40 minutes later, you're like, I have to piss. And then you have to do the rip, oh, yeah, rip right it off and... the head of your piece. Oh, yeah. Dude. And then you have just a completely just shiny helmet for like a week and a half. Yeah, just fucking <laughs> brutal. I know. Oh, my God. Dude, I can't get... The thing is, I'm comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time on this. <laughs> well, I've wanted to, like, lay down. Uh, there's a, Yeah. Do these seats kind of suck? Do these chairs okay. suck? No, I don't mind them. I like the movable wall, Should I just get wall, rid of though? the studio after we just did it? This is. I feel like this is what I do. Like, I just renovated my house on Staten Island, and I'm yeah. like, it's for sale. You <laughs> I swear to God, we're moving. Are you actually? It's... What happens with me, with my decision making, and I think at times this is good, but probably most times it's bad, is once it goes over the hill, I, there's nothing that will change my mind. In turn, like I won't be, you know, public about it, but like it has went over the hill now. So I will now just find every reason to not like my house and every reason to love the new place. <laughs> and yeah, I just yeah. will not. Yeah. And I can't. And Jasmine has. Call, that's a good thing about being with someone for a long time is she knows me truly better than I know myself now because 99% of the time I'm on autopilot. I'm not right. thinking, but she's always watching me. So she's like, you're doing that thing again where you're being absolutely not being able to be persuaded at all. The seaweed you, is always greener. You're fucking, you're doing it and you got to think about, are you doing this? Dude, I this quote by Michelangelo. Let me read you this. This okay. is gonna hit you in a fucking by the head. turtle or the philosopher or the artist. Yeah, dude, by the turtle. <laughs> uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah. Oh, this is this is a good text from Jazz. I think it's time we make a decision. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what it means. Oh, yeah, it's dude, great. An hour into an edible. That's yeah, a perfect yeah. time to get that's that. The, and that's it. No context. Um. Oh, I'm sorry, not Michelangelo. <laughs> Machiavelli said it. Not Michelangelo. Oh <laughs> okay, Machiavelli. I said this on my Patreon episode, but this hit me in a real way because I'm like, I'm, I do this. He said, men desire novelty to such an extent that those who are doing well wish for a change as much as those who are doing badly. Mm. So it's like, even, and no matter what you have, you're always going to try to, it's not even sabotage. It's just, you just want the new thing. So I'm sure. like, do I want to move off Staten Island now because I feel like I've been there for two years and I want to just get a change? Because I can't do that because that's up. I'm, it's not just me anymore. Right, now, now right. You, now you're uprooting other humans, that's especially kids. Though, a lot of people, though, are afraid of change, but you actually embrace Move it on it. a chaotic level. Yeah, dude. And then my parents are split, too, because I have one parent saying, stability 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 sure. and then my other parents saying change is good let the kids fucking adapt are you looking to move out of the borough no like to i would move to another part i would move from staten island to queens brooklyn okay so like almost back because you know i kind of feel like i kind of feel like i've been away from where I grew up in Queens, like yeah. the Ridgewood area, for so long, like 12 years, I right. haven't been home. And all my friends live in the area. They all have like wives and kids, and they're all like, yeah, dude, you've been so far away, like almost yeah. like on another planet. You, it's almost like you don't live in New York when you live in Bay Ridge and Staten Island. You live in that part of New York. <laughs> yeah, it's like you moved in with your podcast character. Exactly. <laughs> on Staten Island. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's, like, it's like when I, where I grew up in Ridgewood, Queens, it's like geographically that's very close to like the actual center of where the five boroughs would be. Sure. So we would go everywhere all the time. Where now I, But then I put myself in places the last 10 years where I'm just as far away as I possibly can be geographically. What was the motivation to go out to Staten Island in the first place the first so the reason why we went to bay ridge which is very close to staten island if you don't know there's the varazano bridge in new york separates bay ridge and staten island is we went to bay ridge because that's where jasmine's family she kind of grew up there we wanted to be close to her family yeah. for the kids yeah. right you know you always want to be closer to the to the mother's family because that's who most likely helps with the, the kids traditionally so then yeah, why what, is that i think just because really like there's no reason for a father after you give like after you like make it <laughs> yeah. there is nature is like we actually there's nothing that you can do right right it's all we've made it up. us as a family is better than you as an individual no like so literally the child only needs the mother right the, right the milk the, the the nature has said i will you we need you for literally one thing and then the rest of that child's life 
is the mother's is it, into adult. It's the mom. Yeah. We modern society now has came up with ways why we need to stay, and I mm -hmm. want to stay because I just love being around my kids and my family and jazz. But like, there is actually no reason from nature. <laughs> Not. Na <laughs> I love you sitting your kids down though every night, just being like, you know, listen, nature is pulling me away from all. Of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just how things yeah. have been. Because even if like people comment on that part, and I'm sure they will, whatever, it, it's it's all society is telling you why you need. I'm talking about nature specific. I, and I get society's important. Sure. Like, I gotta provide. I gotta be there for. But a also, lending. society is what helped, and early society is what helped develop those gender roles in the first place. Exactly. Like the chaos of no society and having to hunt for your food and having to need somebody yeah. at home as the caregiver, and then somebody to go out. Well, and I guess provide. in that respect, you do need the man if you were, were going to hunt for food because you can't. Sure. You can't. But be that is hunting is also providing, right? Like modern right. day, nobody goes out with a fucking bow and arrow in Manhattan and just you know lampoons a pigeon, yeah. brings this it home. Is, we're hunting for our family. Doing that's this. right. This is we what actually, we are actually, doing. This we're hunting. I I put on war paint in the yeah. form of linen pants. Yeah. And, and, uh, if you, and by the <laughs> way, guys, if you don't want to go out and hunt and you want to just have your meal sent to you, HelloFresh is a great option. <laughs> <laughs> ethical yeah promo code chaos 50 i think yeah but isn't that that is kind of the modern day uh com comp to that right yeah is is, be, is going out and providing and working for money yeah. so you can then you know have shelter and food etc <laughs> was that you just... it's just so it's so hard to get comfortable that I, I i thought i had to like reset <laughs> it is it's mike knows what i'm talking about yeah, right? where it's like dude and i did a thing last night i don't know um ophira eisenberg very funny comedian yeah, she Canadians told me, finest. she told me if you do this for two minutes, it's supposed to like reset your entire mm -hmm. physiological Powerful. makeup. What? Really? I don't know. I mean, she told me, and I decided to believe it at face value, no matter what. And I did it, and uh, I had a good set. Right. Imagine that's just what the Nazis were doing this whole time. They just had it a little bit. They're just wrong. doing the YMCA. Yeah, they're like, no, we're trying to reset ourselves. Um, standing. Here's the high power pose. Standing wide stance. Low power pose. Okay. Oh, so it's standing. Standing with your arm raised in a V above the head is supposedly good for you. Okay. Arms crossed over the chest is no low power, meaning like that's not what you want to do. Right. Okay. High power, hands on hips, arms crossed. Okay. I feel like I do 50-50. I stand with the hands on the hips and the hands crossed on my head pretty regularly. Yeah. But then I also hunch and i do the arms crossed over the chest the hands on the head though that is like trusting of society that's somebody that didn't grow up with friends that yeah. sack tap them Dude, it, <laughs> like, like the amount of times that i just even gave one second of just thought to something else and my buddies just came over no, dude that's what was the catalyst for me for all these years still a little bit thinking i was gay because of the amount of balls and dick i touched <laughs> and saw growing up in an all-boy Catholic high school, yeah. like male-dominated community, it's like all you do is see dick and balls, and you tap them all day. So then your <laughs> mind is like, well, that, that's what a gay man would do. Did you ever know that you're my hero bread? I love hero bread. It's the only bread I use. It's the only bread my family uses. We love it. Why? Because of its primary nutritional interest, high fiber, so listen, the bread, you know, you're counting carbs, I get it. We hear bread, ill, we're Americans, we don't eat bread. But this bread is different. High fiber, ultra low net carbs, and zero grams of sugar per slice. It's really, and it tastes, in my opinion, better than your regular supermarket store bought, bought bread. It's got, it's fluffy, it's delicious, it's soft. They also make sliced bread, they make buns, they make tortillas, whatever you want to do. You just go to hero.co or you get it on Amazon. Secondary nutrition, fewer calories than the leading national brand, 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Come on. Right now, Hero Bread is offering my listeners 10% off their first order. Just go to Hero.co and use my code CHAOS to save on Hero Bread today. That's H-E-R-O-D-O-T-C-O to save 10% today. Go get it. Hero Bread, me and my family love it. You're our hero. <laughs> I was thinking about this. Let me know where, where you're at with this. Give it to the me. first couple times, and it, probably the first several years that I had sex, a large motivation of it was to tell the story to my friends, sure. right? To be like, dude, I can't wait to tell my friends about this. Right. This is great. Smell my finger, that, yeah, all that yeah. shit. But then I realized that I'm, I'm technically just thinking about men while I'm inside of a woman. 
Right. So it's kind of a gay act. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> like even if the gay act is me telling my friends, yeah. I'm thinking about them when I'm inside of a lady. Right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, even with sports, like we love sports <laughs> and what is horrifying. No, I didn't know that that do men like actually while they're fucking, they're like, "Yo, I can't wait to tell my boys." Yeah, I'm, because yeah. it's it's an ego power thing, but yeah, in right Especially when you're young. When you it's not like No uh, judgment. <laughs> yeah. Now when I'm 38 <laughs> and banging my wife, I'm like, "I can't wait." to tell Chrissy <laughs> yeah. about the, the marital puss I got last yeah, night. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's true. It's it's because I think like it's ego, it's power. And then we think about, yeah, like the story almost is like what it's really all about. But that's why I guess a lot of guys lie. It's very common to like, especially yeah. high school. I just want, I'm watching Cobra Kai, dude. I'm a <laughs> Cobra Kai. The guy, yeah. Ralph Macchio's daughter, they lied and said she was a blowjob queen. I got to be Did honest they? with you. Ralph Macchio and Karate Kid, the acting, it really fucking annoys me. Yeah. I got to just be honest. His character, not him as a person. I've met him once or twice. He's a very nice man. But the acting, the com constant complaining and bitching from him, and it's like just well, so I'm rooting for the enemy all the time. He, he almost becomes the enemy to me. That's the point. So they, with this, have chosen to empathize with the bad guy and flip Daniel LaRusso. Okay, so I'm only at episode six of season one, so he's going to get flipped. It, it's not even like a big flip, but you just kind of automatically shift and see a different perspective. It's, so I was... It's the whole point of the first... Like, what you're feeling is what is yeah. what's happening. Because I didn't feel it in... <laughs> what you're feeling is what's happening, man. Yeah, man. You guys got me. The, I'm a... Writers. I, yeah. The, Pay him. Because Karate Kid 1, I loved. And yeah. I, but then Karate Kid 2 and 3, he just came like off. like 3? No, he came with off. With silver? A, with no, the fucking slick back? No, but he came off back? annoying. He yeah. just came, Karate 2 and 3, Ralph Macchio's character just was annoying to me. But in 1, I loved him. What about 4? When it's Hillary Swank. Oh, yeah. Is Hillary Swank in Karate? I thought 4 was Jaden Smith. No, there's, no. A, there's one, the next Karate Kid, that comes in between Jaden and LaRusso. She really got thrown into just every half a dude movie <laughs> at one point. It was pretty crazy. Is Mr. Miyagi dead in yeah, real life? He, he just yeah. died a couple years ago, I think. Fuck, dude. Yeah. He was great. He was he's missing in uh in Cobra Kai. Yeah. Yes. But could they get somebody to play him? Or you can't do that. You want to be one of those scabs and get AI to replace the actor. Yes. Oh, there we go. Would Miyagi Let's scam could, him. could we do that? Could the strike continue? But we we get we get Miyagi. I almost called him Kobayashi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a second. So, so Cobra Kai, does it get better? Yeah. It's, I mean, it, here's the thing. It's better, good. It depends what you th think about better. It doesn't, it doesn't all of a sudden turn into no country for old men. <laughs> yeah. It's like unbelievable cinematography and the acting improves. It's campy as fuck intentionally. And it's an easy consumption like it's 30 minutes at a clip you yeah, can watch it passively dude, and then jasmine said that in karate kid 3 the guy who's like the evil who comes back yes. and it's like that guy she, we're watching she goes that guy looks like mike cannon <laughs> <laughs> wait john crease it, pull the up the bad guy no three uh, in karate kid, go to karate kid 3 yeah. silver, silver? oh is he in cobra hair? kai silver? that's a guy i like i is like silver that guy in cobra i'll kai? take that uh, I think he comes keep, into keep Cobra watching, Kai. Man, Look, find out. Yeah, I think he, let me show you this guy. Yeah, with the ponytail. Is, yeah. his, is his name Silver? Oh, dude, I'll take yeah, that. Yeah, she's thank, like that. Tell her, like thank Mike you. Cannon. That's the best compliment I've ever gotten. I wouldn't say it gets bad, but there's gonna be a point where you're watching that show and you're like, it seems really easy to learn karate, and every single child in school has learned it. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Like they just go. Season well, there two, is a, there's a fight that's there's probably, a school wide karate fight. That fight is one of the most insane <laughs> fights I've seen on a TV show. And yeah, it's it's wild. The way that ends, dude. I'm too. hooked though. Like even in the beginning, like I kind of like their cursing a little bit. I like yeah. the Cobra Kai guy's story. He's like an alcoholic, and so I wanted to do this during. This came out during the pandemic, I think, uh, at first. And Cobra that's Kai, did dude. Now I'm getting the vibrating behind my ears. I'm it's really kicking in, dude. I I just felt our energy pick up, and I yeah, got pretty it's excited about it. Fucking crazy, dude. I mean, you just start pulling up videos. It's, let's go. <laughs> We're gonna start I want to make this version of a yeah. show, but for Rad. So the movie Rad, Dude, the BMX Rad. movie, I want to make it so Crew Jones and Bart Connor are the head of Mongoose, modern day Mongoose. Yeah. But Crew is the bad guy and Bart's now the good guy. It's called Balls Out and they both have daughters and they probably race bikes. I love it, dude. <laughs> yeah. Let's fucking do it in this studio. Yeah. Should I get rid of it? What do you think I should get do? Get rid of this studio? I just How long finished is... it. It but... looks great. What? But here, here's what I think. 
don't get rid of it. I don't think you should get rid of it because you paid for it. I think you could be using it for a lot. Like what else, dude? Like everything. Everything that you do. Yeah, but what am I supposed to do in here other than podcast? You should have Chrissy Chrissy works out new material here. And just have a, like a stand-up show? Maybe, maybe yeah. Do like 20, 20 people in here. Where so you if can... you had the studio, you'd be doing a lot with it. Yeah. yeah you would. would be in it every day. Yeah, but I, I don't. Podcasting or not. Me, uh, not like every no, like not office. every day, but I would treat it like an office. Absolutely, yeah. Right. This would be this would be my place to go to in the city between spots, during spots, before, after, all that stuff. Any work that I would have to do, yeah, you should. You it's could, just like a because I can't tell you how many times I can't tell you how many times I'm in the city and I'm like I have nothing to do. I'm just gonna drive back to town. I have nowhere to go. I should get a hotel room, <laughs> and then I have the keys <laughs> to my studio on my car yeah. keychain. This is like my dream situation to have like kind of a hub in Manhattan, especially living outside and kind of commuting in. This is great. You have a you have a place. Like you should get. You should furnish it in a comfortable way for yourself. Why well, you just and shit on Venetia's work? She thought she did that already. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it, it obviously. Can we just get this a TV? Oh, we have a TV. <laughs> you can roll it to the couch if you want and just chill. Yeah, let's fucking spruce this place this up. This place I love you. Like, shit. should we get a TV? Pull a TV up on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> How much the TVs cost? I, keep, I want to dude, see it on the I TV. I keep forgetting that because I am always saying to myself. You know, maybe Staten Island would feel better if I just had any, if I had a place in the city. And it's like, I have a podcast. You studio. literally do, dude. This so is, what, but this yeah. is what I'm saying. My mind will just make it like, I will now find every reason. Because the reasons I keep giving to my family and my neighbors are like, these are not reasons to leave the house. Yeah. Well, what you need, what, what, do I, do? what I would do with this place for me personally. And then personally, tell me what you do with my house. Go. <laughs> okay, deal. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. I want to get to the bottom of this, dude. What I would do with this place is I would make this as much of a Chrissy Fun Factory as humanly possible. So literally, all of your interests, all the things that you enjoy doing, the things that you don't have at home, your version of a man cave, everything you want, boom, here. Dude, I guarantee you could get somebody to come in and help you fucking design this. And then that's additional content to put up. Let's and shout her out. <laughs> we already did. Yeah. Get someone here. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So there, it, it, even whatever, just like our <laughs> <arcade laughs> Mike saying we need to get a guy. <laughs> yeah. Just a, get a, yeah, a, a, a dude guy. Would you do no. this over then? Should I get, no, this I, no, I absolutely wouldn't do this over. I would make this just like more, less function and more like, a little bit more comfortable. Like put it just fucking just put shit everywhere in here. Yeah. Yeah. Even the chairs, like just fucking do it on a couch or something. What I mean, whatever you are comfortable with. I don't think you I should redesign know. this entire thing. That's what he's hearing. He's hearing <laughs> what? That you want that we should redesign it all over again. What but who no, I like this. I like this. It's different. It looks cool. My phone's talking that? to me in an Irish accent. Um, I said it. I said it to Northern Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> as you should. What? Um, I have some political opinions about what's uh, about the troubles. Um, I, I, I. What if we're a podcast that I, we should like swings in here, like a swing, and that's what the podcast is, like on one of those swinging pod benches, like something different. Can you and I, next edible episode, do an episode from sex swings? <laughs> both, <laughs> both of us on edibles in sex X swings, swings just, just doing the pot not mentioning it <laughs> yeah. i would dude i would love to but now i can't well do you guys want to do your podcast in my in here yes all right this is your new studio <laughs> great yeah you hear that but what what if you so say this wasn't even a podcast studio what would you have in here to make this like a place that you'd like to, that you'd feel comfortable going and that you'd like to go. I think, uh, I think the reason why I don't come here more is because it, it, it's, I'm like, I think in my head, because it doesn't have a bathroom, I'm like, it's not a place I can go after work hours. It, there's like, it, there's a bathroom six feet away. <laughs> right. <laughs> I always forget that. Yeah, I know. I, I, I should come here more. Like, there's times at night where it's like, but I'll tell myself, oh, it's because there's no parking. <laughs> I mean, parking around here does suck. Right. But um, no, I just feel I I feel like uh, did you find a spot? You park in a garage? In the garage? Yeah, me too. In the garage. The garage. No, there is nothing but models and Asians in this entire area. No parking whatsoever. That's it, dude. Just garages. I yeah. I yeah, I think that I um I should go into 
I should do more with the studio. You're right. I'm doubting myself now. Well, it's not that you should doubt it, but give yourself the freedom. This is exciting, right? Green light, but the opportunity. But I don't know what to do. That's the thing. But it's like, I don't even know what I want. If a designer came in here, I, I don't even know what I want. Like, I don't want anything. This is an interesting now audience participation portion. Is you These people know you like Jasmine knows you. Maybe yeah. better than you even know yourself. They True. know what you love. They know what you hate. They know what makes you comfortable. Obviously, you, you should have some sort of hologram of your family just kind of tinkering around. Uh, and that oh, would probably yeah. make you pretty comfortable. Yeah. But what do you suggest? What do you think would make Chris yeah. feel good about this space? Not necessarily on camera. If you do have those suggestions, sure. But I think this is great. But in terms of making this a spot that you feel yeah. comfortable coming to, working out of, even if you're just during the day, you got an audition, you got a, me you got a meeting, just you're whatever. Just come here early. Just come here early, man. Yeah. You're signing up for, you know, all, all these different exclusive places. But you see, places. that's the reason I got to get off Staten Island. Why? Because it's too far to come. I sit in too much traffic, <laughs> and it's too far. It's too far to come here for the early Popeye. and then get back. Like, if I lived in another part of the city, I, I can come here, work for the— I could drop the kids off at 8.30, be here by 9.15— Work all day till two, and then if I didn't have spots, and I go back and pick my kids up at three on Staten Island, yeah. I w if I drop my kids off at eight thirty, I would not get here till ten thirty, yeah. maybe because there's bumper to bumper traffic the whole way, and then I'd have to leave at about one o'clock to get back in time to get my kids. So I, I just feel like I'm too far away, and there's nothing. My dad used to live there, but now he lives in Florida. You need a helipad. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. Yes. Yes, yes it I is. Do. I and do. I love our neighbors. I really do. But I'm like, right. I don't know that I... Because even when I told my neighbor, he, he like didn't understand. And I get it because he's like, why do you want to move from a house to an apartment? Like, right. I don't understand why you want to do that at all. I'm like, oh, because I don't want the responsibility of the pool, the yard, and cleaning the house. I feel like the house owns me. I don't own the house. He was like, <laughs> it just sounds like you don't want to be a man. And I was like... Did, you, did you make that up? Swear no the the no that like is that a you phrase the house owns you you don't own the house or did you hear that somewhere I think it's, I made it up it's great banger it's really good keep it uh, <laughs> merch <laughs> write it down <laughs> yeah sell a house merch but I think yeah because I feel like but I think because I'm feeling it it's like like today for example ja we were gonna you know we had some time in the morning and Jazz wanted to clean. The, 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 we were going to uh, have coffee and then go out for breakfast and do this whole thing. And then Jazz woke up and was like, I can't. I have to clean this house. I have to clean this house. Yeah. Because it's like it's space that like. And so now she spent the whole morning cleaning and then rushed for us to get ready. So she went to go see the Barbie movie and I came here. And I'm like, this could have all been avoided if we didn't have that much stuff to clean. All right. I want to talk to you about Factor. I love Factor. It's a meal service I've been using with the busy fall season already in swing. You might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. I know I am. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your dough. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. I love to see you healthy, babe. I really, really do. Are you looking for calorie-conscious options during the busy season? Try delicious, dietitian approved calorie-smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving, you little skinny mini bitch. I love it. This September, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Sal Volcano, one of my best friends in comedy who I do my podcast, other podcasts with, he's on Factor, and look at how great he looks. So right now, you're going to get a great discount because you're a fan of the Chrissy Cast podcast, which I totes my goats preach. All you have to do is go to factormeals.com slash chaos50. Use the code chaos50 to get 50% off. That's code chaos50 at factormeals.com slash chaos50 to get 50% off. I love all 50 states. Yeah, but that shit always. I mean, that's that's gonna yeah, be a right? thing no matter what. Like Fuck. you know, it, it, my my wife is constantly just either cleaning or reorganizing or doing something no matter what. Even if she had just done it, it's just an exercise to kind well, of how, like. How do you deal with being so like you don't live you you're happily in the suburbs. Yeah, I mean, you're I, gonna stay there, but you're I gonna raise I'm, your son there. I'm happily there, or daughter, because <laughs> you're depending on his choices. You know, depending on how he votes this election. <laughs> um, he, uh, 
What? What was the question? Do you? That hold was on. terrible. <laughs> do you? That was a real glitch in yeah, my brain. Yeah. Where man, I was lost. Wait. Do you? Um. Hold on. I can. I can tell you this. Do you regret moving to the suburbs? And how do you deal no. with living in the suburbs and being a man? <laughs> um, well, I'm not much of a man, so that helps. But, no, but it, you're more of a man because you'll do tasks and chore, like you'll mow the lawn and take out the go- you know you, to build stuff. You, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have never mowed the lawn in my adult life, dude. Really? <laughs> yeah, we have because I rent. I, I haven't. I, we don't own our place, so we have like snow removal and all that shit. It actually like that's part of the benefit you have of like me a super. not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, I don't have that. Yeah, because we own, we or we're in the second house. We we live in a house, and it's the second structure on this big property. So the people that own the main house, they they are responsible for everything. Right. So it's good, but in terms of the commute and shit, it is like that stuff is frustrating. Where it's like in and out, in and out. You can't like. But what do you do? But How it's do you not as bad it? as I, I. I've never done two hours. That's fucking. How long? That's if bonkers. you left, if you dropped your son off at eight forty-five at school. And yeah. How long? And you had a meeting in fucking downtown. It would take me an hour. It would take with me an bumper hour. to bumper traffic. Maybe an hour ten. Because you get to the yeah. FDR like you're in this Manhattan in like fifteen minutes. Yeah, it's really. I mean, it's like it's only nineteen miles outside of Manhattan, and like just once you get into Manhattan, that's when things take long. But heading in, it's fine. And you can walk to a store where you live, right? Yeah, I could if I wanted to. Yeah, see, I don't have that capability. But you don't want that capability. You don't care if you have to drive to a store. Uh, I we also grew up different. As I grew, I I was right. born in the city, but grew up in the suburbs. So this this way of life, it, it it not that it necessarily suits me better, but it like I'm used to it. I know what it's like. I still like. I'm in the city every single night, so all the shit that I need to do late, I do in the city and then go home. Vino and Venetia, you both grew up in the city in the Upper West Side. You're not Jewish, but you did grow up in the Upper West Side. You, you two, you, what, if, what would you do if I gave you a house in the suburbs? What would you do? I would rent it out. You would not want that. I wouldn't. Even uh, if you had children. I know that sounded a privilege. Kids. I just, no, no, no. I, uh, no, but you're I, also young and single. Why would you? No, I mean. I'm saying put yourself in a position where you have children. having children. No, no, dead ass. I loved my upbringing. It definitely, it was the tight quarters of like, there, there was three of us and stuff. But I also had the advantage. I was also raised by my grandparents half of the week. So we had the backyard in Astoria. So I really grew up in like two boroughs. I was very fortunate in that sense. Right. So I would say I love your choice, what you're doing. It's like, you know, you get the best of both. And also living close to the city, your children get to experience it. And yeah. it's like a special well, thing. Well, you like the one I'm doing. Are you telling me to move or don't move? Move. You should move to my neighborhood. <laughs> and then we'll be neighbors. True. And then we can just uh, continue. Because I we go into the city all the time. Yeah, so <coughs> we just take, carpool. We do museums. We do the zoo. We yeah, do everything then, all but, the time. What do you think I should do, Vito? Move or don't move? Look, I'm I'm engaged. So like keyword gay, <laughs> these these conversations <laughs> come up, and like we we always thought we wanted a house because right. like you know you think you want that for like your children and yeah, everything. Yeah. But like the more I talk to people like Chris, and the more like I go to these neighborhoods, I realize it's not for me. Like yeah. one, I don't want to be responsible for my house. I love having a super. I've had a super my entire life. Yeah, it's fantastic. Whenever there's a problem, it's not my problem. It's right. their problem. So, like, the idea of still living in, like, some sort of building where I can get that access, like, 24 hours, it just seems so much better. Yeah. And then, like, not even your neighborhood. Like, I went to Staten Island a year or two ago. I was in this, like, beautiful, I was at a friend's house, beautiful community with, like, pools and all this shit. And I was like, this is great. But then I left, and I saw the fucking, like, sad little shopping mall that, like, that would have to be my life. Like, I love, in a story, I walk five blocks, and there's bars everywhere, and I can do whatever I want every night. I just can't. I can't yeah, leave that. That's what I'm living with right now. But don't talk shit about my island. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But what you said is what I sit and think about. Like I, like where I live, even like right. There's no sidewalks. It's mm. one of those places where it's like they just there's no sidewalks. So I, uh, I can't even walk on a not can't even. I know, but it's like just walking on a sidewalk when I do it with my family. Like, even my daughter was like, oh, the sidewalks, it's like fun to walk on the sidewalks. And I'm like, why, why is she being raised with no sidewalks? Like, where, why can't I give the kids a sidewalk? Live, you can't, like, I don't like places that you can't, like, if you wanted to grab a bike and go to the city, you can't. 
No. Like, there's no way for you to do that unless you get on the ferry. Right. Verrazano doesn't have a bike lane. No. Like Jersey, mm. you can't bike into the city because right. like, they don't have a bridge a, like Astoria, that. Astoria, you can. Astoria, you can. The Bronx, you can. Anywhere else. Like, I like the idea that, like, there's some sort of way to walk or bike to get into Manhattan. Right. Or even places in Queens where you just have railroad access that, like, gets you to the city as Yeah, see, as that's possible. the thing. There's no, like, to get on a ferry seems like a good idea. But only because if, like, you want to, like, go see the city skyline. If that's yeah. your mode of transportation. That sucks. Yeah, and I just hate being in a car all the time. Dude, I'm telling you, one of the motivations I, 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 for getting rid of my car is I get so many fucking rid speeding of tickets. Car? Well, we, I, have, I have a car, and then we have a family car, so yeah. we just keep the family car. But I, I get so many speeding tickets for going, but not by cops, by the little cameras, that I'll be going like 30, 45 in a 35, which is like, okay, I guess it's speeding. It's 10 miles, but it's like, you got to catch me. And this is part of being alive. Like, and now, is, yeah. now I get it. So, dude, I add another. Dude, I had to pay 10 parking tickets the other day. I got a ticket in the mail that was like, look, really official. It was like, you have 10 unpaid parking tickets. But I didn't know I had one because they just, they just, you get them. Yeah. And you didn't even know you went through a light. That's fucking so, And nuts. I'm like, this is costing me so much money just to fucking drive in this damn city. Let, let me ask you this because I'm, I'm curious if like, if any part of you ever sits in your beautiful house or coming from your great studio in Manhattan with Which, your, with your family. It, but that side is beat to shit. <laughs> with, your, with your family <laughs> and you have your, your, your great team here. The V team. And the, yeah, double V. Yeah. And, uh, and that like, can you ever just be in that and just be like, man, like, look at this. How, how, what I did, what I've done, what I've made, what I've built, what I've helped create whether no. or not you live there in the future is almost like who cares but does any part of you like look around and like man i fucking i did this this is great no i don't you dry clean your t-shirts man you have a nice life yeah it is yeah well not anymore i don't dry clean them because <laughs> <laughs> i realized i was stupid well no i'm not i'm not complaining i know that my i know we have no i'm not calling you out for complaining either because but everybody i just don't know if i want to live and, in a house yeah and everybody is allowed to complain based on their own personal Epictia circumstance says never be overheard complaining even to yourself oh that's what Epictia said who's that th he's a stoic finish your thought and then i want to read stoic quotes <laughs> I want to roast the stoic. <laughs> I don't really remember what I was going to say. How are you feeling? Because I'm noticing your eyes are getting lower and lower. <laughs> I'm feeling like, as Marcus Aurelius said, you never step in the same river twice. Mm -hmm. I feel, even though I've been on edibles with you before, this is a different experience, a different flow of the river. Yeah. yeah. Does that mean because the water circulates and goes through? Exactly. Baby. I get it. I like All that. Right. Oh, right here. Are we listening? To the yeah, let me listen to, let me listen to, oh yeah, hold on. One second. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Slushy just texted me. I go on at 1 a.m. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too late. Yeah, you're not going. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, here we go. <laughs> when you can remember something. No, not that one. That's not a stoic quote. That's something I heard in a podcast. <laughs> but it is a good one. When you can remember something without emotion, it's wisdom. Oh, Bert Kreischer. Boo, boo. He said that. <laughs> Do you own the house? It does the house own you. <laughs> okay. Cato, another big one. Cato was like the head of the Stoics. Cato was like the Stoic Stoic. He was like Dave Attell to comedians, like the comics comic. Okay. That's who Cato was. Kalen? Cato, Cato, Cato Jenner. Okay. Cato, C A T O. <laughs> Cato Jenner. <laughs> Here it is. He said, in, It's at, amazing that you went straight from Cato Kalen to Cato, Cato Jenner. Jenner yeah. too. He said, <laughs> He said, An angry man opens his mouth and shuts his eyes. He also said, one mouth, two ears. You should listen more than you talk. Oh, you know, that's the recurring mantra I have every time I take mushrooms is, 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 is shut the fuck up constantly. That, that yeah, voice. Yeah, shut up. Just tell, cause when I was uh, for my bachelor party, when we went to Lake George and we all we rented this campsite in the middle of the lake and uh, it was like 17 dudes just eating mushrooms in the lake. Awesome. So great. But my whole trip, I was there with my favorite people, having a great time, and all of it was just like, hey, man, shut the fuck up. Listen yeah. to what they have to say. They yeah. live a life. Let them be the entertaining ones. Shut your face. Yeah. Stop talking. And I did. That's what we do. And I, and, but a lot of times, I think it's our own mind, too. Like, we create these scenarios in our head, 
even like with our own ego, like none of it's real. Like uh, I follow the Daily Stoic on Instagram. He has like, he has he has good ones. Like he has this one thing where people say, um, you know, what if they laugh at me? What if I fail? What if, what if, what if? And then the Seneca said, and then Seneca, the Stoic says, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Definitely. Yeah. And then it's like, um, you know, Oh, I don't feel like working on my project today. I'll start tomorrow. Marcus really says, you could be good today, but instead you choose tomorrow. That's right. So do your book yeah. report today. Then here's a good Marcus one. Aurelius. Yeah, yeah, you fucking Marcus. <laughs> yeah, how good did that work out for you? You're dead now. Uh, he says, you know, when somebody says they're talking about me behind my back, they're commenting about me on Instagram. Marcus really says, look at what sort of person he is. You'll find you don't need to strain to impress him. Hmm. There you go. How about this? I feel so anxious about everything in my life. Epictetus would say, it's not things that upset us, it's our judgment about things. How do you perceive it, my man? That's what you're doing. <laughs> do you <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, dude, let's, uh, oh, God, slushy. Open the blue cabinet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Every, get, every guest on the new Chrissy Chaos shows gets their own Dietz and Watson yellow mustard. That's oh. Dietz and Watson. And we'd like to give you some yellow mustard. That's good. And, I have a lot of pretzels at home. And since we just had Joe DeRosa on and we had the beautiful pig from New York Teacup Piggies, New York Teacup Piggy said that unfortunately on the way home, that pig didn't make it, uh, died. So Dietz and Watson sausage bites right here in Joe DeRosa's pig, the meat bikes, honey maple smoked sausage for Mike. That was the guest that we had on Joe DeRosa right there in that package. There it is, folks. And then thanks for the weed with ricin. <laughs> okay, let's listen to a voicemail. You know what it is, V. Remember what the phone number was? 347-343-3321. 347-343-3321. Call me. This is the actual, uh, this is the landline of the studio here that I'm, uh, Mike has convinced me to leave my family and live in. Hey, Chrissy. It's uh, fucking Mike from the reservation, bro. Oh. Uh, New Mexico. I just want to know, dude. I just got sober, and it's been a hard time meeting people, so I don't want to go to the bar to meet people. Where would you go to meet, like, girls, you know, not at a bar? And what would you say? I would say, I would say for uh, Mike from New Mexico, I would say the best place for you to meet girls is probably the TP. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an adobo. I would, yeah, <laughs> uh, the, yeah. I would. Adobo? You know what, man? I think you should just drink a bunch of Arizona iced tea, smoke <laughs> cigarettes. I think you should go. Um, yeah, dude, go where the buffalo roam. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, maybe uh, maybe like a yoga class. I don't know. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't been uh, I haven't been single in a long time, but I also don't drink, so I understand the uh, social anxiety of that shit. But I think. Uh, the one thing that I've upped in terms of like doing since I've stopped drinking are activity outings. Right. So like a hike, mini golf, these just anything where you're like functioning with your body. I, I was gonna say Dave and Buster's. What were you trying to pick up a thirteen year old? So. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Maybe you don't know what's legal on the reservation. That's true. That's dude, true. Dude, you're a Native American, dude. You're you're a, you're a Native American from the United States of Native America. You should literally put on your war paint, go out, talk to women, and if she doesn't reciprocate, you fucking scalp her. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is that? We're all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, JK, JK, JK. JK, JK. I did that shit for my just TikTok. Kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> no, but I think, honestly, dude, it's a confident... Just... Be confident. Oh, there, 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 there I am. Yeah. There's my cabin. <laughs> Be confident and just go up and talk to women, dude. You're a literal Native American. Ask your fucking ancestors what to do. Or go to AA meetings. I yes. mean, even, even if you're not <laughs> in AA and you quit like yeah. in another way, go to an AA meeting strictly for support or just to try to pick off a weakling. Seriously, dude. <laughs> What'd you say? You know? I used to I used to uh, go to AA meetings with Vito my Mouse father when I was four years old. You used no, to go to AA did. with your father yeah. when he was four? Yeah. What? Tell, had, take it, tell us about it. Dude, so it was like it was like me. It, it, I, I think I my dad was the first one 
who like brought his kid and other dads were like, oh, we could, this counts towards custody. We yeah, can do this. Yeah, this yeah. will be our hours. Great. Oh. So they all started bringing their kids. And then we had like our own offshoot, like kids playing tag slash support group where we're like, you know, crushing juice boxes and smoking cigarettes, talking about our abusive parents while they're, you know, talking about headbutting our mother or whatever yeah. they were saying. Oh, my God. Now is your dad back on the sauce? No. That's no, why I don't not. talk to him anymore. That's right. <laughs> he's been sober how many years 30 something i think was part of your motivation to get sober because you were like i don't want to be like my dad no i didn't drink initially because i didn't want to be like my dad so i i didn't drink until i was 21 like till i went away to college and it was mostly because i played basketball i was delusional af thinking i was going to continue my career in some capacity right um and i just saw down uh, i saw alcohol as like a huge downfall and then in an effort to prove i wasn't my father i drank and then proved i was him yeah <laughs> right <laughs> in, back at it. in every way yeah, yeah i mean yeah. I, I i competitively do a lot of things and that includes drink Dude, i like to drink hard and more than anybody i have now like a sore throat burning feeling in my throat as if i was smoking the weed oh, what no. is that about oh these were made in Wuhan. Ah, yes, Wuhan. It's a bat in the throat. It's what? a bat flap in your throat. Bat flap in my it's throat. It's a little, you got a little tickle from the coronavirus, do you? Dude, you know what yeah. movie I'm watching on Netflix right now? The Devil's Own with Brad Pitt. And dude, I've never seen that movie. I did not know Brad Pitt couldn't do an Irish accent. You haven't I mean, seen could Snatch? do an Irish accent. You haven't seen Snatch either? No. Dude, oh, Snatch, Snatch is rules. Dope. He's, Sna he's a bare knuckle boxer and he's a tinker. No, his Irish accent is great. I meant. Yeah, yeah, but in yeah. Snatch, he talks in a pikey accent, yeah. and like there's, it's so insane that there's like a special feature of the DVD where you can watch with the subtitles just yep. for Brad Pitt. Snatch, yeah. which is he got a lot he of. He is so fucking yoked. I want, I want see like his body in fucking Fight Club is whatever, but look at his body in Snatch because he's a little bulkier. He is yoked. Is Snatch a, a must see? Yeah, it's a Guy Ritchie movie when Guy Ritchie was good yeah. and. And uh, Brad Pitt was in his bag as a bare, kn bare knuckle boxer from Ireland. Like, wait, why wouldn't you want to see that? Wait, so you saw you saw the Devil's Own already? You've seen that? No, well, I actually haven't seen that dude, movie. Dude, it's but so I know good. It's it. on Netflix. No shit. On Netflix, support. They're doing with the best they can on the strike. Yes, <laughs> I love the strike. That's right. No password sharing. No password share. I meant to say support the actors, and I made it seem like I'm supporting Netflix. Oh, I meant you to were. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> support the studios. <laughs> <laughs> studio, studio, studio. <laughs> studio. Uh, I, uh, I have In one. In ongoing quest to erase us. Yes. I mean, yeah, dude, that's the one thing. The strike does fucking suck. Kind of looks like Theo Vaughn down there, doesn't he? Oh, In he does. It's just a bit right there. <laughs> There's a little... Just, Brad, yeah, Theo's got some Brad Pitt to him. I, I'd never... The bit... And... I didn't realize Brad was a good actor. That's oh, yeah. pretty good Irish, right? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yes. it's not bad. Thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> just suddenly be like, thank you. Thank you. But Thanks. Harrison Ford, it's like what like people do so many movies. Like, do you think big actors like a Brad Pitt and Harrison Ford, they do movies like we do podcasts? They're like, I don't remember anything from that experience. Yeah, I think on some of them for sure. Because yeah, right? there's so many like even big actors have movies that like we've never heard of that went either like straight to Taiwan or yeah. straight to VOD or straight to like whatever. Like the American public just never saw it. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, like The Devil's Own is like, these are two of the biggest actors of all time and I've never even heard of it. Have you guys heard of this movie? No. It's fucking great. What is it about? It's about, it's about Belfast in the early 90s. Okay. And they're playing like IRA unionists and there's yeah. sick... AK, like literally, literally the very first scene, I, I'm, I'm spoiling one scene. The first 10 seconds of the movie, the first 10 seconds of the movie is they're just like beautiful shots of like, you know, Northern Ireland, Belfast. And then, and then it's his father and son. And the son is just like running around. And I swear to minute, I swear to God, I swear to God, last night we're watching this movie and we're watching it and they show a long shot of the kid on the boat of his face looking at the sun and Jasmine goes that kid looks like Mike Cannon <laughs> <laughs> she said the guy from Cobra Kai looked at you and the kid from fucking Devil's Own you both look like Mike Cannon <laughs> I forgot 
I forgot she said that. Oh. She and then so, but literally the first scene of this movie. I mean, the first twenty seconds is beautiful father son, and then they go home to their little cottage in the middle of Isle on the farm, and it's his beautiful wife there and his two daughters, <laughs> and then the son, and they're talking. And she's like, "How was your day?" And he was like, "Oh, little Brian was amazing out there. Caught a bunch of fish, you know." And then let's sing the Al Father, and they're fucking about to go to a prayer, and then a masked gunman, like one of those Irish gunmen, comes in and kills the family or kills the father. Just in the look at this. Oh look yeah. At how, how was your day? It was a bit cold. And then he goes, yeah. And then it just keep what? How did Frankie do? Oh, oh Frank. Frankie was tremendous. Tremendous. And then here we go. He's, He's a, a good, good boy. boy. <laughs> keep going. Yeah. He said, "Are you hungry? Ah, sure. Good. 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 Yeah. Here oh, we go. We're a happy family. I won't give you too much. There yeah, you see, are. I went there. You are. And then yeah, it's coming <laughs> in five seconds. Where it just uh, you just think it's a beautiful way to start a movie. Oh. And then here we go. Yeah, right in the middle of a prayer. In the land Let's of tears. Lord, for these thy gifts, which you are about to receive. Well, you're Billy about Pan. to receive. Oh yeah, you are. Look at this. Just this guy comes in and just shoots oh. this fucking guy to death. You're fucking dead. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And then it was so funny too because we were watching this. We were we were watching movies all day yesterday. We just had all, all night, and we had you know the the my the older one was upstairs, but the baby was sleeping. Well, she's two now. Was sleeping on our lap on the couch, and we had watched like another movie, and then she woke up like. And was fully awake, alert, watching this movie, like with her hair crazy. Two seconds, she's up for maybe two seconds, and then that scene happens. And the guy just gets shot to death, and she starts hysterical crying and buries her face in the blanket. And I said, we're keeping it on. <laughs> <laughs> I, just like that's why I'm moving you from, I'll move you to every borough every year so you could just adjust to the new world. That's, so, but that's happened to me with like the town. Like oh, yeah. a crew out of nowhere when he was like 18 months will just like come walking in and it's just... <gasps> <laughs> and he's yeah. like, ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. All right. We got to go eat. Oh, yeah. Dude. This has been fun. Has, has it make you hungry? Has this been good? I don't, yeah. Are we okay? I, yeah. I don't fuck. Go see Mike. Oh, yeah. And then come see me, Feeny, and Sagalo. We're in uh, Manasquan, New Jersey. Yes. I was going to uh, say. Algonquin Arts Center. The Algonquin Arts Theater, where you're going to see Mike and the boys September 16th, is a beautiful theater. It's with Brendan Sagalow and Mike Feeney. It's run by Dino, who runs Uncle Vinny's That's right. Comedy Club, who's a beautiful man who sells <laughs> other comics merch out of his green room, which is his office. <laughs> when you go to that club, it's a beautiful time, but you sit in his office, and he gives you penny vodka, which is fantastic. Unreal. And there's a picture of him and his brother in turtlenecks posing with their dogs Collies. for a Christmas card. And that's just what you're met. And then you go out there, and you have a really good time. Um then he'll be in Levittown at Governor's Comedy Club, November 3rd and 4th. And then December 8th, Washington, D.C. at the Comedy Loft that whole weekend. And come out to the shows. And he's also going to be with me. Um, he's going to be with me on the road, right? What dates are we going to do? Um, Some, we're doing them. Yeah, maybe. I'm doing... I don't, uh, I don't know. know. I don't know no, if you Oh, you're coming yet. with me to Boston? Am I? Didn't I ask you to do that? No. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, well, you're on now. <laughs> All right. Wait, great. no, hold on, hold on, hold I'll on. Do, Let me, I just want I'll to do confirm any and every this. with you, bud. I want to confirm this with you. Okay. I said to you, I said to you, um, hold on. Well, I said, to, uh, oh, wait, no, that was the other. T oh, well, I sent you a screenshot of the guy that I thought looked like Mo Ammer. <laughs> Should we post that? I said November 16th to 18th, want to come with me to New Haven, Providence, and Medford. And you wrote, yeah, definitely, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> That was on okay. July 5th. My man. When is that? November 16th to the 18th. I have it in my calendar. Providence, <laughs> Boston, or Medford, nice. and fucking New Haven. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, we're fucking New England clam chowder boys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, okay. All right. You know what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're just going to, we're going to stop the show. This right. was fun. Yeah. I had a good time. I, uh, I good we're going to cause a scene in this restaurant. Uh, yo, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. We're going to go, man. Mm -hmm.